All right. Um, can I Hello. Hello. Hey, people. Welcome um, to, welcome oh my to... goodness, we have a snapshot and I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah, we are very unprepared. Actually, we are not. We know what to work on today, but we just, I don't know, who left the Minecraft thing on? We're supposed, to be, was... we're supposed to be. Oh, no. We're supposed to be prepared. I mean, I went and set up all the files, and then we decided to update to 115, and then all the files needed changing. All right, uh, Sparks, want to talk about what we're going to work on today? Because uh, you kind of had an idea. Uh, yes, so um, I've been playing some survival um, over the last couple months, and I remembered that one of the annoying things in survival is enchanted books. If you have a lot of them, say from uh, an XP farm or something, it's really difficult to store them because you can't sort them because there's always multiple things on one book. So there's not really any kind of good way of, of sorting them. And they obviously take up a lot of space as well because they don't stack. So what I wanted to work on was a module which allows you to tear a book into individual pages, like a piece of paper with, with one enchant on each page so that you can stack them and sort them using hopper sorters. And then on top of that, uh, you'd be able to bind them back into a book for when you wanted to enchant. So that's kind of the plan for today. Uh, but we are in, uh, in 115, which I haven't opened until now. So... Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we pre-stream, we had a discussion about how to initialize this, because uh, we want to use the lectern. Uh, we want to give the lectern a special function, a, bell, a special side thing that it can do, except for displaying books, which would be to take apart and change book into pages, like Spark said. Um, and we basically have to work out a way on how to mark those lecterns that can do that. It would be super cool to make it all lecterns, to give all lecterns those uh those this property basically but the thing is in order to give this property to a lectern we need to give it an entity and Bax uh, brought up that having an entity in every lectern is probably not the best thing to do uh, so we decided we will go with custom crafters for now so we'll have a custom crafter update uh, upgrade that requires a lectern in the recipe itself and turns the custom grafter into a lectern similar to how the blast furnace turned the custom grafter into into up hello um <laughs> hello hello oh my frame rate uh... yeah the frame rate is horrible <laughs> We need to clear this uh, stage a little bit, I think. Blue? Hello? Yeah, yeah I'm still here. Well, <laughs> why do you seem so lost? Well, because you've cut out several times, so I'm more, anytime you pause for any moment, I'm like, are you still there? <laughs> oh, no. All right, I will clear the stage for us, because we are well prepared. Okay. Um, um, so I've just renamed all of these things files um so some of you may not know but in 115 we are planning to um change the clocking system like update the clock for 115 and also something that we forgot to do when we switched to data packs and we've meaning to do and we thought this was a good time to do it is namespacing uh namespacing our namespaces so instead of book binding it's called GM, sorry, book binders. It's called GM4 book binders. Um, but we don't have the new clock on here yet. So I've given it the namespace, but the custom crafters namespace here um, is still custom crafters because the, we have one 14 custom crafters installed on here, if that makes sense. And we just, we just changed the name, which is why... All of these are now wrong. Oh, that one's still fine. Okay. Yes. So that's uh, that's that. Uh, By the has... way, I just hmm? I just noticed that we probably broke a few data packs on here, so we'll just disable them. How did we break them? I don't know. We updated to one point fourteen, uh, one point fifteen, and I don't trust one point fifteen yet. Blue, here 
here is your portal ID. Thank you. Make sure not to show it on stream. So, uh, so Grob can't join. <laughs> I yeah, we had it happen to us once. <laughs> yes, I showed it, but I don't think the whole thing was visible. I could be wrong. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> um, could you... Uh, Leversion says, I would think you make it work for all by throwing books near to a lectern. That makes a book with triggers on each page for rip out. Maybe if you put a redstone block underneath it, auto tears. Uh, where's this? In yeah. the stream chat, which I've just realized I could pop out so it's easier for me to read. Pop out chat. I think you... Make it work for all by throwing books in the air to let them. That makes it work. I think you're saying that books that on the ground will rip themselves up if they're near a lectern. Yeah, so yes, there is the possibility of making this a book entity based thing, so you don't have to put the, uh, you don't have to do anything with the lectern block. So the lectern block is just a requirement underneath the book item entity to make the page rip, page rip out. But that is a very big but. We have machines that do that, item entities on top of blocks. But those are horrible to interface with. Like, it's way easier and way neater and also way, way, way tidier to interface with a machine that has like a proper inventory or can interface with hoppers uh, instead of a machine that you drop items on top that converts those items into different items, e.g. block compressors. Those are horrible to automate because you throw the item on top and it drops the compressed item on top again. It's just a nightmare. Uh, so, uh, and Dante, no, we can't do GM4 colon book binders because you can't put colons in uh, folder names. And uh, Leversion says, can you put enchanted books into a lectern? And this kind of leads on to what we wanted to what we want to play oh, yeah, with today, me, which is yeah, let me in one fifteen, there is a new data thing. Do you actually know the command for this? I have not opened. Uh, yeah, it's execute uh, store result storage. Okay, so there's this new space called storage. So before you used to be able to you used to be able to store the result of a query in uh, a boss bar's value. Um, in, a, in an entity's MBT um, or into a scoreboard and things like that. But all of those were integers. You could only store numbers. If you tried to store a string, it would store the length of the string as an integer instead. But this new storage um, space, uh, incorrect argument for command, <laughs> um, this new storage Space. space, which doesn't seem to have tab complete ready yet for it, allows you to store base. It's basically like a text file, so you can put any MBT you like. Um, so we were thinking of actually, once we know where this lectern is, having an entity inside and giving it a storage inventory. So mimic the inventory uh, format essentially of. Uh, blocks that have an inventory and then allow it to pull <laughs> pull from a hopper placed above um to like a data data merge to pull an item out of a hopper above it it's temporarily store that mbt inside its own storage space modify that and then modify the mbt of a hopper placed below it to output was our thinking yeah uh, so this has one restriction, which is you can't use droppers to input things. I would love to support that, but the issue is when this dropper ex actually tries to input the item, it basically shoots it out and... Yeah, the, uh, we would have to deal with the item entity in some way and no, that's fine. <laughs> so we'll limit it to hoppers and hoppers, and hoppers will insert from the top, pull out from the bottom. Mm. I think what we're going to do today, Sparks, is uh, let's not worry about the crafting process for now. Uh, we'll just place our fake area effect lab in there by a command and just play around with like the mechanics of it a bit, because that's more fun to watch than like the 
Oh no. It's not running. Oh no. <sighs> we have a double base. A double base? What? Yeah, look in chat, there are two update messages. Oh yeah. Pro this is probably the uh, bookbinding thing. Let me disable it. Yeah, it is. Um, where did you get that? Was it a really old? I made a copy of GM4 template pack 114. Is that outdated? I don't know. Um, let me just disable There was an announcement stuff. in Discord, me said. Uh, Toffee posted an announcement saying there will be a stream. I guess we didn't do a stream announcements ping. Alright, I've disabled a lot of stuff now. Uh, I will re-enable. The book binding thing? It could also be... And now we can... Hmm. That will message us again. <laughs> Base updates are just a nightmare. I really don't want to spend this stream just debugging this. Yeah, um... However, the main function is also not running. Uh, book. Binders. Book binders. Uh, I will look into it as well. Maybe people on stream will figure it out. Uh, da -da -da -da. Sparks, if you want, since you have the camera on you, uh, you can show people a bit about how these lectures work with like the book insertion stuff, which is not what we're going to use, but during that time, I can probably get the thing to work. Uh, I found a space that I didn't update to. Uh, should the ah oh, should the score board have a namespace now? I guess no. probably not. Well, uh, scoreboard already has namespace. It's GM4 yeah, yeah. I, I mean, uh, in terms of like the website packaging, this might be annoying. But actually, no, because I think it's just it's hand done by us, isn't it? When we make the module, G uh, bookbinders book. Bind, uh, this one has to be GM4 bookbinders in it though. Bookbinders, this is just text though. Bookbinders. Right, we should, this should fix it, I think. Still not sure why we have two bases. Why it's saying. Us two updates. Well, it installed now, but main still isn't running. Unless it's you were giving us two update messages. No, I didn't. Uh, is do you disable bookbinding? I re-enable it. Yeah, it's enabled. Um, bookbinding block take. Oh, I know why. It's gm4 underscore bookbinding main. Oh. Pulse check. Still not running? Oh, it's still saving from my, on my end. Well, let me look up, well, uh, check the server console for us here. Uh, couldn't read function tackles custom drafters recipe check from custom drafters in data pack GM for a book. Unknown value GM4 underscore book underscore binders recipe chat. Couldn't pass data file. GM4 underscore book. Is it because the file doesn't exist? Binders colon destroy underscore book underscore binder. From book underscore binders colon loot tables destroy block uh, destroy underscore book underscore binder chasing. We have a lot of errors. Uh, okay, we don't have the recipe check file. But that shouldn't even be running yet. Let me just do a reload again. Uh, reload. All right, uh, let's go through these errors one by one. 
Uh, first one is couldn't pass data file gm4 underscore book underscore binders colon destroy underscore book underscore binder from gm4 underscore book underscore binders colon loot underscore tables uh, slash destroy underscore book underscore binders. Yeah, something's wrong with this uh, JSON. Hang on. <coughs> oh, bless you. <coughs> Sorry, thank you. Uh, uh, something's wrong with the JSON in destroy underscore book underscore binders. Can somebody shout at us? I I think that I've copied the I've made this from the wrong like an outdated template, which I guess I don't know why that's still there if it's outdated, but Damn, we've just spent twenty five minutes debugging. Uh this is so stupid. Um you could just use uh you can just make a copy of crossbow cartridges on the server side. What about uh, block and compressors? Or block compressors, yeah. Since that's already a crafting one. Yeah. Oh no, people are mad at us. <sighs> okay, I guess uh, I will... <sighs> delete what we have. So okay. should I just delete the data pack we were working on just now? Yeah, yeah just delete it. It's... We didn't do anything. Uh, so, Mr. what is this data pack? Um, it will basically allow you to insert an enchanted book with an array of enchants on it into a black box, and the black box will tear it apart into pages. And you can later use those pages again to make new enchanted books. By the way, should this cost XP? Uh... No, it needs this, this, there's no point making this if it isn't automatable. Yeah. Well, we have liquid tanks. Yeah. No, you were like, do we, do we want it to have to use custom crafters though? <laughs> you know, let's make it use liquid tanks. Um, I was thinking that maybe we could make it, uh, require rotten flesh as a, uh, way of like breaking down the leather and the glue holding up the whole holding the pages together as a use for rotten flesh mm -hmm. how would you insert that how would you communicate to the player how much it needs it would probably be one flesh per book unbinding but i don't know if i like that idea anyway Plus, in that case, we might want to do like a separate fuel input from book input, like Francis do. So we'd have to do more checks. So we'd have to check for hoppers around the thing. Mm. Yeah, mm. Let, let's not do that. The thing is, I'm still worried that we might want to have it uh, to, to contribute some cost to it, like. Because hmm. right now combining books costs you XP, you know? And this will basically allow you to combine any books however you want for free. I see your point, yeah. Um, I mean, the, could, the, cost yeah, is, the cost is time in a sense because you have to rebind them before you can use them. That's true. You can also give it a chance to lose the page. Mm, I don't like that. I don't think people will want to use it if it yeah. loses the pages. Like, I th I think I personally would rather have a mass of chests with some mending books in there somewhere that I have to go look for than risk losing the mending enchant. That's true. Uh, what's the chat saying? Uh... Oh, hey, Peach. Maybe normal books need it? Well... You're ripping apart a book, so no books are needed. We could make it require leather to rebind the book. Yeah, but then we have the issue again of 
how do you insert that fuel? It would be the cleanest if that would go uh, would be inserted with a hopper from the side. But that would mean more checks. Can't it just check the container above, the hopper above? That just feels weird in my opinion to have both item streams go into the same into the same uh, side. Kind of like a furnace, I guess. Yeah. Fuel in the side. Uh, we could well, we could restrict it if if this doesn't feel too weird to people. We could restrict it to the back of the lectern because we know which way the lectern is facing. That's true. So we could say leather input from the back. Sander says, oh no, leather. Uh, and then the deconstruction would lose you the leather? Yeah, yeah, basically. You're ripping the thing apart, so it loses you the leather and the reconstruction costs you leather again. That seems fair. Um... Uh, let me set up like a testing rig here so people can have a look. Uh, so this is our current setup. It will work like this. So all these hoppers acting as actual hoppers. String would also work, but then again, Minecraft books don't require string. Is that they need leather? Or experience bottles if the problem is that it takes away the cost of XP. Oh. Uh, I think experience bottles are generally a pain to make though, aren't they? Yeah, well, you can't get them except for villagers uh, or, or liquid, liquid tanks. tanks. Out of date.mc function, when did we add that? Um... Well, let me just look at chat. Uh, ahoy, emeralds, RXP battles. Oh, what does do? Yeah, so it. It turns books into enchanted books with multiple enchants into separate pages and you can rebind them later into new enchanted books. Um, pretty much work in brokers and up for discussion about how to work, like the details about it. It would be so neat if you could just right click the thing to insert a book as well. Can we make that work? Can we I make think we can work? make that work. Oh, we can make that work. Oh, Sparks, do you want to go all in on this to make it really good? I'm sorry, I was uh, renaming files and I didn't hear what you said. Do, do you want to make this really good? <laughs> yes. So, you know, Always. it's super cool if you can make hoppers work and it interface with it, right? Yeah. But what if you would also be able to right click and change books on to debind, uh, to insert them? Uh, Taking out the items would still only work with like a hopper. Actually, that would also work right clicking in a way. So, what we could do is instead of having an area of tech cloud inside, we could. Villager? Invisible armor stand. That, that picks up the book in its hand when you click picks it. Picks up the book if you right click it, and the lectern won't overwrite it. Can't right click enchanted books into a lectern. So that way the casual player could just right click the thing and people that would want to automate the thing could just automate it. So the ar um, armor stand would just be able to pull a book from any hopper placed above it as well. Well, we could... Can you, we could pu can you push these lectern. with pistons? Lecterns? Let me, let me see. 
Uh, Shadow Slam says no. Um, well, we could make it so that the hopper would just insert the book into the armor stand, yes, or we could just make it two special cases. Um, special me already did, yeah, you can't push them, so we're safe, technically. Um, special me did some stuff with armor stand item insertion using right clicks uh, on the portals on PS5. So it definitely works, it's definitely doable. Okay, that could be an option, yeah. And we could also make it so that the items uh, that leave the lector, we could make it so that they, instead of getting inserted into the hopper below, we could make them spawn as an item entity with pickup delay of zero. So if you have a hopper below, they will automatically get picked up. But if you just right-click the thing and don't have an automatic setup, uh, they will just the pages will just pop out as items. and be added to your inventory instantly because they have a pickup delay of zero. Yes, that could work. All right, I will, uh, whilst you're renaming files, I will put up a little uh, whiteboard for us so we can write down some of the ideas we have. Uh, let's go with, uh, how do I feel today? Let's go with a green board. so many files i know we should write a generator for this stuff uh, jump, jump. uh shadow slam says why does the left door from the audience send you to to the corporalization booth, but the right door is non-functional. Um, the doors aren't finished yet. Uh, special worked on them, but he didn't, didn't finish them. Like he was working on it, it's a lot of work to finish them, but they are really cool. Is book binder running? I can't tell. Should still say Don't hi, right? I think so. Yeah, it's not running. Uh, let me refresh my FTP here because I have a lot of files open. Oh, pulse check is running. Oh, there's something. <laughs> what square tracker do you use? <laughs> yes, I, I have no idea. Uh, I think the, I don't think bookbinders is ticking. It's just set to zero. We really should have switched to 115 five minutes before we started streaming. Yeah, yeah, but we'll need it. Yeah. Unless you want to deal with like, uh, with like um, static chute boxes. Um... That is really loud. <laughs> Straight turn it off. Yeah. Well, let me get that. Oh, that Oh, I deleted main, that's why. Did I delete main? Oh, welcome. Okay, now uh, it's running. Beach. Yes. Right. Anyway. 
Well, that's horrible to read. Why is it so that's dark? Better. Because Minecraft Light is weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. Sorry about that. At least we got some discussion done while we were working on this. So uh, my question is, if we have um, a lectern with an armor stand inside it, A little bit okay. Um, summon armor stand. You want to make it look like the book is oil? Well, uh, no, 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 no. I'm wondering, laser. I'm wondering what kind of hitbox it has. Like, uh, if it's inside, we use... like, we can, can, use can we click on it from any angle? Is my question. Uh, well, I think it, you'd it, have it to happen. click on the actual surface of the lecture, and we can definitely make that work by twisting the arms. I don't think you have to aim. Do you have to aim for the arms to make it hold the item in its hand? Yeah, you do. Uh, I need to summon it with arms, don't I? I put on some notes here. So we, can. we can probably make it look so like that. It's its head things. with a cobblestone block. It still picks it up in its hand. And if I yeah, click you have its to... head. Uh, when uh, I we could use the book. small arm stand, I think. But that's also fine if the... you want this to work like this. I'm looking at this right now, and my cursor doesn't interact with the armor stand around the base at all and then actually it covers the top quite nicely like uh, most of the top of this lectern surface is yeah. armor what stand. if we make it small if we make it small we could also move it slightly off from the center so it covers the surface better uh, data let me just data merge this uh, entity Small one B. That's too small now, ain't it? Yeah. Well, it has cobblestone now. <laughs> but it has a sign. It has a sign for you? For me, it has cobblestone. Interesting, because I was clicking with cobblestone, you were clicking with a sign. What do I get if I try and take it? Can you change it back to full size? Uh, yeah. What did you get? Definitely cobblestone. Huh. Weird. Yeah, I think I think full size is actually fine. Because you want we wanted to have a nice big hitbox for you to right click on, right? Oh yeah, definitely. If we teleported it slightly further towards the front of the armor stand, it might even cover the entire armor stand. Although, yeah, I don't know. Might be nice. Yeah. Mm, we could also move the arms in a way that displays the book on the lectern actually. Um, that would be dependent on the rotation of the lectern, but that will be fine because it only has to be done once upon summoning. Mm, things I'm concerned about is this. Ooh, hello. Oh, Ooh, that's that's cool. That's Thank interesting. You. I was not expecting that. <laughs> Thank you, game. <laughs> is that piston making? breaking particles when it moves, or were you just breaking the block behind it? Oh yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> Thank you, game. You are very nice today. That's yeah, so... unexpected, <laughs> but nice. Yeah, so for the casual player that just wants to have these in the house, in their house, they can just right-click items. Yeah. Uh, the item appears on the lectern for a bit, and then it will get absorbed into the lectern's inventory. And where does it go? Where do the pages go? The pages, once a uh, book binds, the pages just drop as an item inside the lectern with a pick up delay of zero. 
So hoppers can instantly pick them up if you automate them. Ah. And if you are a player, you can just pick them up like this. This also means that they will sit around inside the hopper for like a slight bit, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. Like the hopper has, you see this hopper has like, uh, if I fill up this hopper with like books, the hopper has the small space where items can sit. Oh yeah. And mm -hmm. yeah, so if there's lectern top on the pages, just sit in there, it's fine. Like they will get picked up eventually by hopper. Yeah. That's a good idea. And that way players we, we will just to... pick them up instantly. So yeah, you're right. People will be able to just, uh, if they're stood next to it, they pick it up. Uh, maybe yeah. play a sound when the conversion happens, so because players can't see that something's yep. come out of the hopper, uh, out of the lectern. Yeah, we can make a sound. And the good thing is now that we have a cost for rebinding them, it also makes it really easy. Like, uh, we need to give the lectern some kind of signal that it has to debind now to take the book apart, which is easy. Just if you have a book, take it apart. Uh, me but said, for the rebinding? Me said we can use loot, the slash loot to put items in the hopper, but we're looking for a way where we don't have to have two output methods depending on what's below yeah. it. Um, but now that we have like the, the leather as a cost for binding books, uh, we will just tell the lectern to bind a book once it has leather in its inventory. Crop says, doesn't this block hopper placement? That's a good point. Uh, this? That's a good point, actually. Um, let me just try to... It does. Uh, huh. Can we... I wonder, can we... Can we make the small and teleport it up? To make have... it just poke through the electric surface? I have a feeling that it, its interaction hitbox is the same as the block blocks from being placed here hitbox. Yeah, but electric doesn't take up a full block, you know? You think we can get it exactly at the height where it has an interactive surface on the top, but it doesn't block the block above? Yep. Let me <laughs> that might be possible. And give it no gravity 1B. And I will do... Um, execute at run teleport. Point four. If you teleport, I can I can try placing each time. It still works. I can't even see the hitbox of the thing yet. Yeah, it didn't teleport because new teleport. I can't place it anymore. Right. Uh, minus point one. Nope. Minus point one. I'm just keep clicking. There we go. However, it doesn't have an interact hitbox anymore. I can't click it. Uh, plus zero zero five. No interact tick box. Nope. 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 I'll tell you when I see an interact tick box. <laughs> Nothing. It, it looks like it's po popping up and then falling, but that might just be a visual thing. Wait, why is no gravity back off? What, what is happening? Crop of saying well, no gravity is back off. No. I don't think it is. Doesn't look like it. I think it's just visually falling. It's just because I'm teleporting it so... Uh, just a little bit. Yeah. I'm, I'm still trying to place, I, I will tell you. Okay, so now I can place, but I can't interact. So back to this. Um, let me... Wait, what? As soon as the thing is in there, I can't get it out anymore. Now it does the falling thing again. What? I have to teleport it in from the top to make it work. That seems not right. <laughs> How about now? Uh, nope. Yeah, now I'm back to uh, place, but no. Let me let me do a thing. It just here. fell in. I didn't teleport it. Just must be like either back or. <sighs> uh, minus point one. 
No? Nope. I can't touch it anymore. We need we need the interact and the place, if that makes sense. Oh, now I have something. Yeah, so... Yeah, so this would work. It's pretty precise, unfortunately, but yeah, it's I just the center of the block. I like the precision. You have to click... I mean, it, it, uh, the location makes sense. It's the middle of the... Actually, you can kind of yeah. miss. You can pl try click on the middle and miss. Well, the other option would be to have it block hopper placement, but you can place a hopper before you craft the thing, or before you place the thing. Doesn't feel nice. <laughs> yeah. You can either you can place a hopper on top of a custom crafter. Although I think earlier, like our earlier custom crafters, you couldn't because of the entity sticking out the top. Yeah, Kropov says or or. I don't think Marcus work because those remove like the hit will make the hitbox like tiny. Yeah, I don't think it will work. Um Misa says, do you need to be able to place a hopper above? Why not force the hopper to be behind? We were talking about having the hopper behind supply the fuel. Like, yeah, so um, they are Yeah, they are like uh like you can see, as you can see here, Misa. Um That feels wrong, probably. Like you see here, Mizzou, uh, on the top, they go <laughs> to books. And in the back, uh, we'll have leather. Uh, leather will be required for binding the pages together again. Yeah, but not for extracting. And we want to have two separate item streams because that kind of, kind of feels more Minecrafty, I think. One other feature that, that I was thinking of having, which is like a next step, would be allowing it to combine identical pages like a stack of pages combine them into an upgraded power so like two uh power one books uh two power one pages become a power one power two page yeah we'd have to consider mm. if there's a cost for that huh the thing is that i feel like that would be a thing that you would have to do with books because that costs you that costs you like experience usually I don't know. I'm just. I'm trying to think of what uh, of what players will want. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> well, I don't know. I I think. Um, well, players would want to place a hopper on top. They they, they will. Yeah. Can we? Are we sure we that we shouldn't below? just use a custom crafting table for this instead of a lectern? Yes, I want this to be a lectern. <laughs> way cooler. It feels so much better, Sparks. I, I see what you, I, I know what you mean. It does feel cool to have the uh, have an extra feature for the lecterns. Especially if you can also click it like this, like by hand. Yeah. I think this is... <laughs> Add another custom crafting machine that turns your enchanted book into a special written book that you can <laughs> then right-click onto the lector. <laughs> I mean, it's, people it's, would get used to this. It's not an awful hitbox. I, I don't know how... If if a player who, who was new to Game Mode 4 and just downloaded this module uh, re went on the wiki and read click the top of the lectern with the book, they might struggle a bit. Like, I can see the hitbox, and I know yeah, that when it you... vanishes, but then I'm a technical player. Wait, I know me, that when I don't let see me the do block... For you. Sorry? Uh, let me... Yeah. Me said the fuel is leather. Oh yeah, my eye care thing keeps popping up. I don't know why I have this. The, like the eye care thing is designed, it pops up and I basically like stand up because I work from a PC all day, every day. And then most of my hobbies are on the PC as well. I, I get like a shoulder and back trouble. So I try and like stand up every hour, move my legs a bit, uh, rest my eyes. But the problem is that my brain is so used to seeing the warning thing now in the corner of the screen that it just completely ignores it. It like filters it out, kind of like uh, ads on websites or pop-ups. It's just it's just not even there, and it's not actually doing anything more anymore. So I should just uninstall it. Sparks, <laughs> try this now. Sorry. Try this now. Try to insert the thing. 
That's interesting. You can't see the top of the thing. What did you do? I made it invisible. Oh. <laughs> um, it is. It is pretty much the center. Like, as far as a small hitbox goes, it's at least in a sensible place. Can we place a block underneath? Yes. That's good. We'll have to uh, re. Figure, figure out what his position exactly is, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> teleported in relatively in a weird way. But at least there is a position that works in a way. I think I'm kind of satisfied with this. But... Wait, what happened? It's gone. Well, well, where did it go? Did it fall when I broke the block under it? It must have. This must be a bug with like one point. Yeah, it's not there anymore. Oh no! Oh, I know what's happening here. It seems like no gravity doesn't work when it's inside a when the armor stand in question is inside a block. So is it not that you teleported it up? Did you teleport it sideways instead, and that's why it worked? I teleported it up, but as long as it's in a block, then no gravity doesn't work apparently. Let me let me verify that. If the player nearby is holding a hopper, TP the armor stand down. Otherwise, TP it up. Um, it sounds laggy. It sounds laggy, it's, but it's, it's a it's one. a good solution. <laughs> I mean, I'm fine with the hitbox it currently has, to be honest. Yeah, I'm okay with it. And the TP the armor stand up when a player is holding a book. Yeah, that also isn't. Well, let me let me check this. The, the issue with both of those is currently we have a system where we don't have to have any kind of constant check on players. Uh, in a radius, but with that we would. I guess we may have to report this. I wonder if our custom... Custom crafters are probably fine. Liquid tanks might be broken. Wait, it seems to work here. Uh, very confused. Can you summon uh, the... Uh... We've lost the perfect positioning for this one now, haven't we? Yeah, we did. Uh, I'm just wondering if we can watch it again to make sure that's what happened. Move it up 0.5s. Yeah. This is turning into a 1.15 uh, debugging stream. Uh, let me take this one distance 5.6. Head at S, run TP. Point five up. Seems to work. Though these are like, can you swap the class clocks for uh, oak planks or something, Sparks? Oh, it fell. Nah, yeah, I teleported it down. Oh. <laughs> Still works. What if it's small? I don't know why that would make a difference, but... Seems like this big one is fine. Yeah, well, just make it small. I don't understand what's happening here. <laughs> small 1B. This one's fine. Huh. Very confused by this. At this point, we're reproducing what we did last time. Uh, Okay, so we have... They are teleported up by like a very small amount. So we can place blocks and interface. Oh wait, can I inter Oh, it doesn't have arms. Yeah, now this works. 
Like now I can tell it's too high now. Fall down the it's too high. You have to lower it. What happened before? Tell then? me what it's. Yeah, it's good. Uh, let me teleport up again. I like a notch. Nothing. Nope. There we go. So it is. Wait, what? No, it fell down again. Wait, no. Okay, now, now we break the concrete. What? <laughs> Can you try to place something on top again? Nope. No? Okay, so, so now it is like the perfect size. Okay, now. now if I break the cobble, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> what is going on? Um, I'm not sure how I feel about this. <laughs> Does it have to have arms? But it did just happen briefly, didn't it? Where it suddenly yeah. dropped. Uh, what's the tag? Arms won't be show arms. Uh, camel cased. Well, it now has arms, but it still doesn't fall. I'm super confused by this. All right, uh, so the armor set doesn't fall, and now this doesn't block any interaction, and yeah. I also have like the exact coordinate for this. I'm, it's I'm, a I'm scared. I'm scared it's just gonna drop again. Hmm. This height. Point not one. Yep. From from what? From the bottom of the block. Okay. So I summon one here. Uh zero one. I'm I'm scared now, like I don't trust it. It's gonna just randomly <laughs> break. <laughs> Like, if it was just me, I, I would be thinking that I'd just done something stupid, but we have a lot of people watching, and... Yeah, so now you can place things on top, and it has the maximum size hitbox. It is a little bit outside the, um, the hitbox You can teleport the in the center again if you want to. I'm just wondering if that makes a difference on the drop thing. Although, this, this way we can at least, uh also click the base of the thing. Hmm. But again, not all of it, so it doesn't really matter. I would actually put it, push it in a bit. Mm -hmm. um, let me push it into like 0.6. It's too far, I think. I guess it has to be like, there's a three tier height to this. Maybe it has to be in the bottom rung to be seen. Which is interesting, because you'd think that it would be able to be in the middle rung and still not block the, uh... Yeah, so this should pretty, be pretty good now, because now you can click on the entire, like, bottom there part, and the top step, the middle step part. Hmm. But now you can also click the base, which I don't like. <laughs> Weird. Anyway, so, I guess we don't... Do we need to still use storage if we're using an armor stand? Um, we might not need to because we could store it on the armor stands. Oh, well, yeah, we still need to. Yeah, so the armor stand will just act as a buffer for the storage. Mm -hmm. And we'll just store it in the storage. We could technically also not use storage and use like scoreboards to store the stuff, but now that we have storage, we might as well use it. Misa says it's more efficient. Yeah, Should and we... we can just copy over the item tag into the storage. Right. Yeah. Shall we try doing that? Get a hopper up yes, here with an let's, item in it and go for that. copy it. We, we're gonna have to. Though that's a very complicated thing to get working. I will just warn you. What? Pulling the item from up here? Why is it like apples slightly off center? Um, pulling. Um, making sure that it works with stacks and stuff like that. Well, well it's. Oh, giant box are stacks. No. Uh, yeah. We do have to potentially deal with recombining where the items could be stacked, though. Yeah, and slots. We'll have to check all other slots, but that's fine. In case, in case anybody's wondering why you can't just take an enchanted page and use that in the enchanting table, by the way, we already checked, and unfortunately, there's some kind of hard-coded thing um, where um, enchanted books are the only item which can 
be used. I mentioned it to Fry, one of the Java developers, and he thinks it's a uh, basically a hard-coded thing that shouldn't be hard-coded, but for now, that's how it works. Uh, we do we can store this in storage, but we also wanted to display the item, so it has to go in the hand slot anyway, right? Yeah. Can the hand slot well, hold a stack of something? I think it only holds one item, doesn't no, it? No, it can't. So what I was thinking, Sparks, is the hand slot is only a temporary thing. Yeah. So it temporarily shows the item in the hand slot for like the clock tick, and then it moves it into storage. Because mm -hmm. we only process the hand slot every clock tick and move it every clock tick into storage, so it will show on there for like a second. We don't want to hide. It would be cool if it showed. Sparks, how do you feel about this hitbox now? I like that you can still reach it when there is also a hopper on top. That feels nice. <laughs> that's weird. You can actually hit. You can actually interact with it through. Oh, that's the that's the hopper. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I've saved the coordinates into this command block so we can always mm -hmm. retrieve them. <sighs> so, All right. Yeah. Um, Get us working. So what's the chat saying? Storage more efficient, says Nisod. Alright. Uh, so we we need to do we own We're gonna have to deal with items in more than the first slot of this hopper yes, as well. We have <laughs> to deal with one. So Because this is gonna be yeah. like built into someone's farm and it has to be able to cope be a with. Bunch of there's gonna be a bunch of there are gonna be a bunch of parts to this module. Like we'll have to have one algorithm that takes the items of Hopper and inserts it to the armor stand. We should check them in drain order. Yes. So left to right. There is. is it left to right? It is left to right. Yeah. Okay. Left to right. So I guess that's the first step. We let's just let's just check the first slot for a moment, and yep. we want we to move that to storage. Um, by the way, this is a science for itself now, so be prepared to get a lot of help from Crop of Mizzot. I had to deal with that when I did work on Alborz and inventory management. And the guys Crop of and Mizzot, they are pretty good at this stuff. Tab complete doesn't seem to work for storage. Uh, is storage tied to an entity, or is it a global thing? No, it's just like... It's you can name the storage like you can give the storage file a name basically. So you can do execute store result storage, and then you can give it some name, right? I thought. Yeah, you can give the storage some name, which is called target. Uh, so you can call it like Sparks. Sparks or lowercase storage and put it just in. How do you put it in top level path? I don't know. Put an item. Um, byte. And then we do scale. Then we do uh, run data. Get. Crop up says no general. No general? Oh, that's in, uh, answering my question, I guess, about whether it's a uh, global or per entity. I'm I'm getting. Are you getting autocomplete for that, or are you just getting syntax errors while you type it? Let me uh, send you a thing. Storage, Sparks, storage. Oh, it actually sees it as Minecraft. Now that you've done that, it's tab completing Minecraft colon spark storage. Item byte one run data get entity s. Found no elements matching no gravity. Oh yeah, it, that won't work on yourself, obviously. Yeah. Uh,
Um, actually, change it to GM4 uh, column stocks, box storage, please. Okay, armor center is the following entity data 1B. So now can I do data get storage? Uh, GM4 Spark storage. Oh no, no, now there's Sparks and Minecraft storage. Fine. Yeah, there we go. 1B. Okay, interesting. So I guess that means that we can't uh, like long term store information per entity. We can only like use it in a, in a cycle and then overwrite it in the next cycle because every entity is going to be accessing the same location. So it's good for like short term processing, but you can't refer to a previous oh, yeah, stored it's, information it's actually, because because we it. obviously we can't use the entities UUID as part multiple of the path. Entities. Yeah. Uh, mm. Well. Maybe. Well, it's 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 fine, Sparks. It depends. Though. It depends like, on your copy. Oh, I guess you could you could like copy the UUID of the entity, but that's not going to help you because you can't uh, get it back. You can't reference it in a path. So what are we going to do? Where are we going to store things long term? Because it's not an issue with like debinding books, because that will instantly work as soon as you insert a book. Uh, it's more of an issue with binding books again, because if you insert a page, uh, the table has to wait until leather is inserted to bind the book. Well, surely it can wait until there is leather, and once it has leather, then it deals with the book. Then it deals with the pages. So what will it do? It will just not absorb... It like wouldn't absorb pages unless it has absorbed leather? Yep. But then it doesn't know when to bind. Like, like whether it's been given all the pages that you wanted to put into a book. Yeah. Especially, so I guess, especially it... if we're like right-clicking it and doing it by hand. Yeah. Mm, we could store it onto the armor stand, I guess. As a like a custom MBT. In that case, we might not even need the storage thing. <laughs> um, I don't we think we, could... no, we can't store custom data on an entity, can we? Only well, we can have an item on the entity. That yeah, I guess we'd have to have something in its head or something. Yeah, in its. So uh, we could use that. That would get around, around all the storage thing. That would be uh, more permanent than storage. Um, yeah, but it would. Allow, yeah, it would. We need it though. We need it for the binding of books. Otherwise, that's not gonna work. Unless we, you want to make it so that it only allows books with one enchantment in it to be bound again. Also, be the possibility of making a scoreboard objective for every possible enchantment. <laughs> and having a scoreboard that tracks what the table has in it. It would be a, a it would be an enchantment plus a like power level of the enchantment. Well, yeah, but you'd have like a scoreboard uh, for each enchantment, so you'd have one for lack of the sea example, for example, and um, the armor stand would have. A score of three in that one if it had like a level three. Right. We'd have to make sure that all the books you're trying to bind have different enchants on them. Yeah, I was about to say that, but let's not worry about that for now. I think the best way of doing it is having an item on like the head of the armor stand or feet of the armor stand where the interaction of the slot is locked and using that item as a storage basically, as an entity specific storage. So if you, 
So you've got your lectern, right? And you have some enchanted book, enchanted pages, uh, which is just paper with custom lore and an enchant sheen. You want to bind it into a book, so you've given it some leather. Uh, I assume uh, are you I... talking about manually doing it? Or... Yeah, manually. Like, so yeah. I, I, I give it a page. Yeah, you give it another page and another one. Yeah, so you want to add a leather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't jump ahead. You give it a page, and also thanks for destroying it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Sorry. You give it a page, and then what? It consumes the page and holds it in storage. Yes. Yeah, so, so if I changed my mind, should... would I break the lectern and get the pages back? Yeah. Yeah, it's I gonna, guess so. Uh, it's going to have to have that's... like quite a complicated destroy process as well. Then. Well, it could also just void the pages because you're literally breaking the thing that you're holding. Stretch out paper yeah, pages. But it's supposed and... to have a. It's supposed to have an inventory, right? Yeah. So, yeah, that's another thing, but we'll worry about that at a later point. Uh, but yes, that's how it's going to work. So you put in the page, it briefly shows the page on the left hand, then it consumes it, stores it inside, and you input input the next page. Okay. Uh, what if you click, what if it has in its, what if I give it a power uh, page, and yep. I click it with another power page? Good question. Uh, should it check that, or should it just try to make a book with two power and chance on it, and it will work, or will it work, and you have a book with two power and chance, and will be, will be useless in Anvil? Can can you enchant a book with... Can you give a, an enchanted book two identical stored enchants? Yeah, you can. I feel it, like you can. Uh, let me... You can, but it won't give you any advantage in Anvil. No, so it's, it's basically... We could just fault. make it so that it will allow it, but it's basically just your fault because you're bad, bad at bookbinding. Yeah, I guess somebody might think that it's a way of multiplying the power and they'll try it once and then they will learn from their mistake. Or it might, people might think it's a bug, I don't know. That's maybe easier than... Otherwise, you could, make, you could give it the page and if the page doesn't work with what's already in storage, the page just stays there and then if you click it again, you'll pick it back out of the hand. I think it would be fine if we allowed people to do that. If, as long as it acts in Anvil as I expect it to, like it won't give you any advantage. Yeah, okay. Um, are you trying to make fine, it now? Yeah, because yeah. you're you are trying to bind the book yourself, and if you're just bad at that, then... It happens with armor from the horseman. Yeah, it does. So the horseman, um, they get... Ojek. The horse, yeah, the horsemen, they get, like, custom enchanted armor, you know? So they yeah. have, like, a preset, hard-coded piece of armor that they get, but it also gets the enchantment randomizer onto it, so you can get multiple enchants on a bow or something, so you can get, like, two times protection for an armor using horsemen. Oh, yeah, I think I have seen that, actually. Okay, so that, that would be a thing that we can do. And I guess, you know, if you, if you mess up and you have a book with two power ones in it, you can always... Put it yeah, back think... in the bookbinding table to get the pages back. And all you've lost yeah. is some leather. You're binding a book, and if you mess up, it's your fault. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's nothing stopping someone in the real world from binding two copies of the same page. It's just not particularly useful to anyone who's reading it. Uh, okay. We're getting some more me more mechanics discussion than any programming today, but I think it's it's, fine, it's good uh, and it's good to have a discussion where people can contribute as well. What else have we said? We said uh, some kind of book finding. Um, I think some uh, of this is going to be repetitive, like uh, grunt coding, as well. Each modification is a copy. Oh, right, that's still referring to storage. Yeah, it's good to have a discussion where people can contribute, say what they mm -hmm. think about it, and help us make decisions that are not horrible. <laughs> um, yeah, so that would be bookbinding. This will be hard to, uh, a lot of work to code, by the way, interfacing with these inventories, but it will be super awesome, and I'm really looking forward to using it. It will. I think it's going to be a pain to code, but I don't think it's going to be too, like, inefficient. Like, I think we'll be able to make it run nicely. Yeah. I also think it's going to be, well, it's going to be a pain to code. It's going to be an ease to use. <laughs> okay, here's another question. If you give a book leather, you right-click it with leather, because I'm assuming... Before we it has this... pages. Sorry? Before it has pages. Before it has pages. I assume it consumes, it holds the leather, ready for a book? 
Yeah, I mean, or does so it, it could either just... Or actually, you know what? You know what? Book. Let's have it drop leather. If if uh, if you feed it leather and it has no pages in storage, it just drops the leather. Yeah, uh, sounds good to me. Because otherwise we have to deal with, like, an inventory-keeping count of how much leather is inside. Plus, I think leather is a good yeah. way of saying, I am done with my recipe. This is the book I want. So, yeah. yeah. Like, no pages equals the leather just drops on the floor. Can we make a note of that? Yeah, I'll put that down. Uh, read chat, by the way. What happens if you break the lectern with the stored data? I guess the data is still on the entity, so we can do something if we want. I guess we'd have to make it drop everything it has stored. Yeah, we could either make it that, or we could say you're literally breaking a thing with virtual paper pages inside Max. You're not going to get your paper back. Uh, I, I think I'd like it to drop the I pages, think, but I think we're going to I think it will very much code. depend on how hard it will be to code, and I can't really... I don't have a sense how um, easy it will be. Can, can we copy the data of an inventory slot into an item entity? We so can we copy summon... strings and MBT from something to something, yes. Yeah, so we could summon an item for each uh, array in the... In for the each entry in the inventory array. Inventory array, and then merge the item's data with the page. And then I guess we don't have to worry, as long as we store, as long as we store everything with a count of one, instead of stacking them, then Which we will even do. if there's two power one pages in there, we'll just summon two power one items and they'll stack themselves. Yeah. So, I think um, that's how it works. I'm very much up for just composting the pages as well. If it's too hard to do. Yeah, it would be a pain. We'd have to have like hand coded drops. Actually, no, we wouldn't. That would be a way of potentially just all, uh, making it drop whatever's yeah. inside, as long as we find a nice way of like cycling through the item list. Array, yeah. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's, that's so we know how to drop the items because we just sum them so this will work we know how to insert items we know how to handle just leather mm. crafting we haven't talked about crafting a lot yet um are we set on a custom crafter so you get this thing by making a custom crafter extension and in the recipe for the custom drafter upgrade, it will use a lectern and it will turn the custom drafter into a lecture block. Um, yeah, I, I feel like this is a good way to do it, but I feel like it's weird to have, yeah, to have yeah. this, put a lectern inside it with some other items, like a custom crafter, put a lectern inside with like some shears or something, and then it just turns into a lectern? Like, I'm gonna tell you this, I would love it to be on every lectern. It would be so nice, but it, it would but, cause lecterns to essentially well, be entities. The crafting wouldn't be too horrible because you can detect placing of lecterns and then raycast, but yeah, yeah, like you said, that's too many entities and people are used to these to decorate things. Like I've seen people use them for like, Ceiling fixtures for lamps, like... Uh... Speaking of which, um, we should probably have a way of indicating visually that this isn't just a normal lectern, so people uh -huh. don't forget. Um, enchantment particles around it. Yeah, that could work. Um, similar to an enchantment table. Enchantment table. I like that. That works. Yeah. Uh, and it, would, it could even be pretty subtle. Like, we've already got the, them being yeah, executed just a, on. Yeah, just a couple. Yeah. Um, just so players know what's what's up. Oh boy, yeah. I'd, it would be nice if you could just do this with any lectern, but I can't think... We could make it work with any lectern. If a player is holding an enchanted book, we raycast, look for lecterns, and then summon well, an armor stand 
at the lectern they're looking at. We don't even have to worry about that box. There's a stat for tracking how many lecterns you place. So if that increases, you can just break up from them. No, no, I'm saying that if you place a, a lectern normally, it just acts like a lectern. But if you walk up to a lectern oh. and you're about uh -huh. to place an enchanted book on it, so we detect they're holding an enchanted book, then we look to see if while they're holding an enchanted book, they look at a lectern and then so going the it. so going the tower cauldrons approach yes and then i suppose i was gonna say if um if the armor stand is left with no inventory it turns back into a regular lectern but that will make automation hor horrible yeah, unless we horrible. allow it to stay if there's a hopper above or below but then you need an entity again to check if there's a hopper above. well the entity is already there oh yeah i see but then if you break the hopper, you need to reform the thing, which might feel weird. If you break the hopper, yeah, you would. Uh, we'd also have to do the ray casting. We'd have to do the ray casting for enchanted books, leather, and paper. Actually, no, just enchanted books and paper. I think it's best if we do this like a machine thing. Mm. It it would it would work. It would be cool, but the problem the problem is. Uh, well, that's a lot of ray casting. Maybe it doesn't have to turn back into a regular lectern because it's got the particles. Players know just... it's a special one. Maybe just walking up to any lectern while holding an enchanted book or a sheet of paper will make it a special one permanently. That way, like decorations, they'll just be there. They'll just be there because we don't have. Yeah. Especially if they're like in the ceiling or something, they'll be left alone. I mean, so a player could just like walk past a ton of them with an enchanted book and turn them into entities, but that's like for most mm -hmm. servers that will be going against the rules of like being be... sensible with your playstyle. Yeah, and adding the like enchanted pages turn them into special lecterns would just make it more flawless, I guess. Right? Yeah. So that if you if you have an enchanted page, you want to put it you can just walk up to a lectern without needing an like enchanted book idea. too yeah we, can, yeah, we that, can do that then it's not reliant on custom crafters anymore uh but it means that it feels more like every lectern can do it yeah what do you guys think of that <clears throat> i love the fact that there's a um a thing here saying very important do not remove and nothing next to it <laughs> yeah place a place a two box there please <laughs> six wheel b says just an idea lectern to unbind into pages and piston smoosher with leather to rebind hmm is that more of a uh, you throw the things on top of the lectern mechanic but piston smooshing is hard to automate Well, there are um, automatic smooshes for metallurgy people have made, right? Automatic uh, casters, not automatic smooshers. Oh, okay. <laughs> this this is my jam. Don't remove it. <laughs> okay, we have some ray casting code to add to this thing. This is getting complicated, but I think it's going to be fun. Well, it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be feel well integrated. It's gonna be it's gonna feel like a actual part of the game. I hope. Yeah. In before Mojang had it. Uh, Sparks. To make it to make the immersion even better with making it feel like every lecture is magical. How about we only display that particle if a player is nearby, holding one of those books, a book or a. Uh, magical page because then because if we display it always then you still have distinction this lecture doesn't have magical particles while the other one other ones do and when we only display them when a player is holding a book then you can see oh there's something i can do with this but by default lecterns don't have that the thing then is, if you are holding a book and you're near a lectern that you haven't used before, it won't give off particles. But if you walk up to a lectern you have used before uh, with a book, it will. Well, it will once you use it once, I guess. 
I, I see where you're coming from. The, the, but the, the reason it, I wanted it's... the particles is that people can be like, oh, damn, that's an entity that's uh, causing lag on my server. I should remove it if I'm not using it. Was kind of my thinking. I, I see where you're coming from from a gameplay perspective. Like, uh, they should all give off the particle if you're yeah. holding it nearby. But ones that you haven't used before won't. Until you but use they them. will once you are near them. Like, look at them. Like, with your solution, ones that you haven't used before won't either. No, but, um... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you're saying uh, that holding an enchanted book, lecterns will give off the particle to indicate that you can do something with that item with the lectern, that's not particularly but, helpful okay, because if, yeah, it will only happen if you've already done it so you know it's a thing i guess yeah i don't know <laughs> i i do want a particle though i want players to be able to it's it's more of a like lag busting thing for me it's like knowing that that lectern is laggier than most lecterns <laughs> yeah yeah i guess so yeah, we'll discuss the details of that when we get to implementing particle. Plus, my version doesn't require a radius player check every cycle. That that's very true. <laughs> well, it could <laughs> just be piece. part of the ray casting. The, like, only make it glow when you actually look at the thing with a book. Mm -hmm. So only if the ray casting succeeds to the particle. Um. Oh. We have we have this armor stand here. Don't break it, please, because you keep doing that for some reason. If, <laughs> uh, could you give it armor quickly, please? Uh, yep, I can. Or you can just use this one down here, which is in the exact position. And oh, okay, where did you, you deleted this where one? Where did it go? You you broke it while I was trying to demonstrate something. What? You punched it and broke it. I think you might have been trying to break the block above or something, but you did Wait, is there an armor standing here? Like, no. Oh, wait, what? Oh, uh, those are invisible. Yeah, yeah okay. sorry. Ah. Uh, put the lectern back. Let, let me just kill them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to see if you have a book in the lectern, whether that uh, has like a higher hitbox or something go. that overwrites. Okay, so I can place the written book which is understandable now can i yeah i can still use it as a thing uh but i can and if i look slightly to the left i can still use it to read the book um how will we deal with this uh, will we just lock the lector to not having a book or I don't think we will can we lock just it. we can display an invalid book theoretically uh, so if we put like an invalid item in there and make it display a book then you open the thing and then you can't take the book out and you can't put in a new book a uh, new book so we could do that whilst the lector lectern is holding like i don't thing. i don't see why like it, it works yeah, it like do, doing this there's nothing wrong with it it doesn't yeah, uh, yeah, so. break anything it just means that if you misclick you read the book and if you want to fix that you just take the book out <laughs> Or we could just make it only work on lecterns that don't have a book in them, which would make sense to me. Uh, I guess you need some space to work on there. Oh, oh, we need another mechanic here. Uh, if you cl if you give the lectern an item, it can't do anything with. It needs to spit it back out. Does it, or will you have just to right click it back out? Oh, that's true. Yeah, uh, unless we are, like we're using the slot to briefly display the thing, right? So are we locking the slot so that you can give it stuff but not take it back? Or... You can also take it back if you want to. Because that means that we're going to have as to... Long as it's... When it takes the item from the hopper, it's going to have to check what the item is for the display, and then it's going to have to check again when it removes the item to check that the item is still there from in the yeah, display. Yeah, so no, it's not going to check the first time. So the first time, we'll just copy the item into the display slot, regardless. Uh-huh. And then when it moves it into the storage, which is not the storage anymore, <laughs> uh, then it will check for what item it is. Does that mean that if you have a hopper above it and you put uh, a torch in there it will display the torch on the lectern and then either yeah, so. lock up until somebody hand picks it out or drops it i guess so yeah it will just lock it up until somebody hand picks it out uh, i mm -hmm. see where you're coming from yeah because yeah. sometimes item filters uh, mess up right and then you'd have to go and like 
declog the lectern. Well, but that happens with Ferna as well, right? It does, yeah. Uh, I think there are yeah, there are longer. hopper there are slightly larger like one block longer um, hopper filters that don't uh, clog up with overflow. Actually, you're probably not going to have a hopper filter above this because. Oh, that's true. If you've got like a system where you're accepting a load of items, you're not going to be able to sort books. You're going to be like any kind of weapon will go through with the book. Ah, that's a fair point. Yeah. So, unless this is in a system where you only give it books uh, by hand. It's going to encounter swords, uh, like in a sorting system, because there's no way of really s filtering books from other things. Yeah. Um, All right, then let's make it filter books then. So from 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 the hopper perspective, it could only pull things out of the hopper that it wants. Well, the thing is, from the hopper point of view, we could just skip the display step, and when you attach a hopper, it will just instantly go into the arm stand storage. That's fake item thing. That's also true. Yeah, we could do that. Uh, in which case we don't have to worry about displaying at all. Yeah. Then it's just if you do it by hand, it briefly appears then there you because it. you placed it there. Yes. And then afterwards it consumes it and then we don't have any locking welcome, issues. Nathan. Hi Nathan, welcome. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Let me write that down. Okay. Mm. I don't think displaying it from the hopper is too important in an automated system because A, there's a fat hopper on top and B, it's probably not going to be seen too often. Uh, in which case the hand slot becomes less of a display slot and more a secondary input. Yeah, it's just a small buffer. Yeah, it's it's an input slot. Uh, and if you put something in that input slot that it can't consume, it just sits there until you take it out. And I guess it would continue to accept things from a hopper while that's locked. I guess we'll see like mechanically, programming-wise, whether it causes an issue or how, how it's easiest to make it behave. Go yeah, two more notes. Certain items with by hand displays <laughs> uh, displays it briefly. With by hand, sorry. Yeah, let's just delete the notes. That sounds good. Yeah. Um, let me also write down the thing with like hoppers. Uh, item validity check. Hopper or hand slot. Whew, man, there's a lot to think about here. Yeah, we should have written this into a book. But... <laughs> uh, I don't know, this is easier to like peruse without having to flick through, I guess. That's true. All right, so I guess that's everything for like kind of. Yeah, I'm kind of tempted to uh, end the stream. Yeah, and then um, off, off stream um, fix the fine, data pack yeah. to make it actually correct. <laughs> uh, yes. And we've done raycasting stuff before, right? We could maybe set. Yeah, there's there's some server code we could just reuse for that. Yeah. Like, yeah, we that can... one is exactly that. Yeah, we we'll just add <laughs> with a few optimizations, things. like not raycasting all the time and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, great. We will see you next week. I think I'm still around next week. Yeah, I am. I will be. Yes. All right, guys. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, Thanks for your feedback. We hope this kind of planning out mechanics stream uh, suited you well. <laughs> <laughs> Ignore the first half hour where we faffed around with <laughs> data packs. And we'll see you in a Christmas mood next week. See ya. God you will.